Okay, let's talk about CBEST math, and we're going to practice in this uh, video proportions. Now, uh, this is going to be kind of kind of like a basic overview of what proportions are, but we'll take a look at a few problems. And before we get going, if you need a lot of help preparing for uh, the CBEST in terms of the math section, I offer a, a comprehensive course. I'll leave a link in the description um, of this video if you want to check that out. But you're definitely going to need to know a lot of math to do uh, really well on the CBEST, which anyone can, but depending on where you're coming from in terms of your math skills and how long you've been away from it, even if you did great in high school or in college, if you've been away from math, you're going to have to review. And it's qu uh, quite a bit of math on uh, the CBEST. So you'd want to be fully prepared. And one of the things that you're definitely going to want to know is proportion. So let's get right to it. And let's talk about uh, what a proportion is. So let's uh, just write something down here. Let's take a look at the fraction 1 half. Now, this is not a proportion. However, what is is the following. Now, before I finish writing what I'm going to write, I want you to think of a fraction that is equal to one half, but not written as one half. Some other fraction that's equivalent to one over two or 50%, etc. All right, so let's use a fraction, let's say five over 10, right? So this fraction, if I reduce it, is the same thing as one half. So what we are looking at here is a proportion, okay? Now a proportion is two equal fractions by definition. Okay, so if you have one fraction equaling to another fraction, you have a proportion. So the key thing you want to know is, well, what does this mean? Well, we want to be able to solve proportions, but one of the biggest properties about proportions, there's more than a few, but the biggest one is something uh, called the cross product. And that means that if we multiply across, kind of crisscross in this manner like so, the products are going to be equal. Okay, so we're we're going to be um, multiplying uh, diagonally. So let's go ahead and do this one highlighted in yellow. So this is going to be one times ten. One times ten is equal to what? Two times five. All right. So one times ten is ten. Two times five is ten. Okay. So when you have two equal fractions, the cross products are equal, and this is the main way that we want to um, solve proportion problems by using the cross product. But again, um, you might see a problem, let's let's kind of jump ship here. Um, you might see a problem something like this, all right? One over two, let me write that a little bit neater. One over two is equal to three sevenths. So you might see a problem that says, is this a proportion? Yes or no, and explain why, okay? Well, the way you would answer this is the following. You would look at the cross product, okay? And then the cross product was, is going to be able to determine whether these are, are in fact two equal fractions. So one times seven, is that equal to two times three? And we see it's not, right? Seven is not equal to six. So this is not a valid proportion. So sometimes you might get a flavor uh, of a proportion problem that, um, uh, goes along these lines. And there's a lot of different ways proportions are used. They're, they're very um, uh, widely used in algebra and geometry word problems and, and, and triangle problems, similarity problems. So you're going to want to know them. And proportions also relate to the topic of rates and ratios. So while we're at it, let me just address this real uh, quick here. Rates and ratios. So Rates and ratios are effectively fractions. Let's just use our fraction one half. But a rate is where, um, well, but both of these rates and ratios are going to involve units of measure. Okay, so a rate is where the units of measure of your fraction are different. So, for example, I might have actually these. Let's use a different one here. Let's say sixty over one. Okay, so I might have 60 miles, might be my numerator, and then my denominator might be one hour. Okay, so this should look familiar to us. This is 60 miles per hour, but we like to write it this way, right? 60 miles per hour. So if I might say, hey, what is the rate of the vehicle? Well, it's traveling at 60 miles per hour. That's a rate. And you can see here that we have different units of measure. Okay. Ratios, if you already guessed here, 
are going to be um, the same unit of measure. So let's take a look at something like that. 1 over 20. So maybe I have 1 teacher to 20 students. Now you might be saying, well, these are different units of ratio. Not really. They're counting the same concept. Okay. What are we counting? People. Okay. So 1 is a, is a count of a person and 20 is also a count of a person. So we're kind of the same noun, if you will. So this is an example of a ratio, like a student-teacher ratio, okay? So ratios and rates and proportions all kind of tie in, right? Because proportions are dealing with fractions. So you might have two equal fractions that are comparing rates or ratios, okay? Or you might just have a simple proportion problem. So Again, I can't teach you everything about proportions here. Just, this is going to be a quick uh, review on it, but you definitely need to know more. But let's take a look at a simple proportion problem. It might go something like this. X over, actually, let's make it a little bit more interesting. X plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1 over 2. Okay, well, let's do this. 1 over 4. Okay. So... I might say solve this proportion or solve this equation, okay? Now, anytime you have an expression in algebra like x plus 1 or x minus 1, anytime you have a sum or difference, you always want to put these in parentheses, these expressions, even though they may not be written there, okay? So with this being said, we're going to go ahead and use the cross product to help set this up for us, right? So we're going to go 4 times x plus 1. So that would look like this, is equal to 3 times 1, or 3, okay? Now, at this point forward, this is all about your equation-solving abilities. So what we're going to do is what? We're going to apply the distributor property, so it's going to be 4 times x plus 4 times 1, which is 4, is equal to 3, okay? Now what do we do? We want to go ahead and subtract that 4 from both sides of the equation. So we're going to write it like this. And we're going to kind of add down in a column manner. Okay, at least you're visualizing it in this manner. So 4x plus nothing is what? 4x. Uh, positive 4 plus a negative 4 is 0. So that goes away. That's what we want to do, right? So that's eliminated. And 3 plus a negative 4 is what? Negative 1. Okay, and to finish this up, what we have to do is just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 4. So x is equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so if I plug in this value up here, I would get what we call a complex fraction. And then both of these um, fractions, a new fraction created with this value, I'm not going to do it here. Once we um, created that, uh, by using this value, negative one-fourth, you would see the cross product uh, would work out. So this is just a basic, basic kind of rehash of proportions. Uh, lots of applications, something you definitely need to know. Uh, they come up in geometry, they come up in word problems. Um, but a quick review of what a proportion is and how it ties into rates and ratios. So again, if you need more help um, with uh, math on the CBEST, I put together a really comprehensive course. I think you'll uh, really enjoy it. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below. But I'm always doing videos like this to help you out. My background, I taught middle school math, uh, high school math, college. I, you know, I've been in math education for many, many years. So I'm passionate about it. And I do you know, relate to all you uh, teachers. Um, although I didn't teach in California, I taught in other states. And uh, I know what it's like to um, take these uh, tests, right? And you have to prepare. You can't, um, if you haven't taken these tests before, I can tell you right now, you're going to be doing yourself a disservice if you don't take it really serious and put in a lot of effort. Plus, you're doing this for your career as well. You know, you want to be as strong as possible in math, even though you may not be uh, teaching it as a subject. But um, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Again, I'm doing videos like this all the time, so I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you do. If you enjoyed this video, Hey, I'd always appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. It's the only way I know, you know, how I'm doing and, um, you know, if you have other questions about CBS math, maybe I can uh, make a video to answer your questions. But with that being said, I wish you all the best on the CBest and thanks for watching. Have a great day.